I, uh, what I have to say. Thank you very much for inviting me to this interesting discussion. Uh, I'd like to just make uh, really uh, two points on, in terms of the general title of, of this conference, which is on the one hand the impact of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, and on the other hand, uh, uh, and you could say that this is, there are two aspects to it. One is man against nature, if you like, uh, completely independent of the kind of governance that one has. And the other one is the relationship of the individual uh, to their society, uh, or more concretely, to those who are in power to take decisions concerning the collectivity and the collective behavior uh, of, uh, of, in this case, nation states. Uh, first, uh, about the man versus nature aspect. We have been concentrating for a number of years now on climate change as being the greatest danger to humanity, and to some extent, the Boston Global Forum has also been engaging in a very significant uh, debate about the effects of artificial intelligence uh, on society. The pandemic uh, uh, is something uh, that has never been uh, at the center of worldwide discussion until the COVID-19 uh, incident. And it's a very strange thing uh, when you think of it, uh, how the whole thing happened. Uh, it's supposed to be a microscopic particle that isn't even alive. It certainly doesn't seem to be possessed of anything resembling uh, a new uh, nervous system, uh, um, a consciousness, a mind or intentionality. Nevertheless, it's, it, it seems fantastically adapted uh, to uh, attacking humanity, uh, not just in terms of very clever ways uh, of, of spreading the contagion, uh, but also uh, uh, in terms of being lethal. And uh, strangely enough, by the way, uh, weeding, out, uh, weeding out of the population uh, those who are poor, as we saw in the case of New York State, uh, the poor and the aged uh, in Spain, uh, notably. Um, the reaction of governments to it, frankly, I do not see a bilateral division between totalitarian, authoritarian and democratic uh, governments. It seems to me that the first reaction was in terms of uh, finding out what on earth is happening, what kind of pathogen it is, uh, what its behavior is like, and what the implications are for collective health and security. And in that sense, uh, even uh, with an initial phase of denial, Dr. Lee, instead of being congratulated, being called to the police station uh, and, and being reprimanded uh, for spreading disinformation and then losing his life in the end, uh, the Chinese did uh, sequence the virus. Uh, they did uh, put it out uh, in the public domain. Uh, they did notify the World Health Organization. Uh, whether they influenced the World Health Organization in undue ways remains to be investigated, but certainly President Trump's precipitate decision uh, to withdraw funding from uh, the only worldwide body that is able to handle a health pandemic mm -hmm. uh, uh, to choose that moment uh, of need for major uh, and maximum mobilization across the world, to choose to withdraw from it uh, seems to me, uh, uh, I, I think it surprises many people in the world uh, in, in terms of a kind of expected reaction. But um, the first reaction of governments let's say both the US and the, and the Chinese exams. The first reaction was to try and deny it because politicians don't like bad news. Uh, politicians get uh, happily supported or re-elected as the case may be, uh, if, if there's good news to be had and they can say, look, under Man, uh, we heard this uh, from, uh, from a number of, of uh, uh, more or less successful politicians. I mean, President Bolsonaro in Brazil uh, I'm not sure that to this very day, he, he's not trying to minimize uh, the power of this particular pathogen to truly influence uh, the safety uh, of the citizens of his country. Uh, he, he doesn't seem to be a man who listens to scientists uh, or to scientific uh, evidence. Uh, and uh, I'm not, uh, you know, it'd be worth looking into to see how, how he continues to react to this situation. But what has a reason in this situation is there, uh, in terms of democratic structures of governments and the participation of citizens and the rights of citizens, what we have had is an emergency that has allowed even democratic uh, governments to take measures that 
inhibit uh, or in fact having to react to the pandemic. Uh, and in ways, by the way, we have not seen, I have not seen the mathematical among populations uh, and factually uh, determining the level of, of risk to public health uh, as opposed to risk to public uh, economic viability uh, of populations, uh, the, the risk of availability of food uh, and, and so on and so forth. Um, the availability of hospitals for other diseases than COVID, because uh, they, they have not gone away. People are, still have cancers and they have heart attacks and, and hospitals have to be able to look after them and not just COVID-19 patients. Um, but what is worrisome about uh, this, uh, this particular pandemic is that even in democracies, what we have seen is that the population has been submitted to infringements of their basic civil rights uh, which they have voluntarily accepted to be the downside, if you like, the counterpart of their increased, uh, not just their personal security, in other words, lowering their own risk of getting infected, but also a uh, civic responsibility towards their fellow citizens in terms, if I, even without symptoms, being asymptomatic, I go out in society, or as my husband and I um, were planning to have our 60th wedding anniversary in, uh, on the 16th of July, uh, is it responsible on our part uh, to gather people together with the risk of contagion? This is the sort of thing uh, that one has to weigh. And I have seen uh, on the internet, uh, for instance, on YouTube in South America from Argentina, there's a lady uh, who broadcasts uh, every day uh, uh, a denial of the existence of a pandemic. She, she claims that it's, it's all a conspiracy to oppress the people in Argentina, which I, uh, again, uh, I, I cannot pronounce myself on, on, the, on the level of democracy in Argentina. Uh, and, and she may well have reasons to doubt uh, the goodwill of, of the government of, of her country. But nevertheless, you see, here is somebody going on, uh, speaking in Spanish, which is spoken by a great many millions of people, and, and saying this is all uh, an imaginary uh, conspiracy. Um, is there such a thing as, as this pathogen? Uh, are there such things as, as this actually happening? Uh, this is all a conspiracy to, to, to infringe on your freedoms. Uh, look at the Declaration of Human Rights, uh, the right to, of movement, uh, the right of contacting other people, etc., etc. Um, and um, then the, the other thing is, if you compare the rates of mortality in different countries, then of course you realize that uh, it's not just a matter of are they, how democratic they are as opposed to how autocratic, but it is really a matter how much have they uh, invested in public health as one of their priorities as against their economic might worldwide or their military might worldwide, as uh, certainly is the case of the United States. Uh, uh, as Professor Nye pointed out, uh, their primacy uh, is uh, at the moment, unquestioned, the, uh, the United States does not have real rival, rivals at this moment in terms of its economic and its military might, but in terms of its public health policy and the safety uh, of its uh, citizens, particularly those of color or uh, uh, of poor uh, economic backgrounds. Frankly, uh, I think that, that could be, uh, your country, you who are in America, um, I think it has something to think about. Uh, and and the when the population goes out on the streets because of a black man being killed by the police, uh, it's interesting they did not go out in the streets when the statistics appeared showing that the uh, rate of deaths in New York State was disproportionately among people of color as opposed to white people. Uh, they did not go out in the streets and demonstrate. But then when there was a video showing graphically how a policeman shot to death, uh, uh, an unarmed civilian who is only a suspect, uh, then people go out in the streets and forget. They forget about the risks of, of contagion and so on. So that even in countries that are technically demo democracies, I think that a real democracy and real uh, equitable uh, conditions and chances for citizens that is the challenge that democracies worldwide uh, should be facing. And it's their rate of success in that, in how well they answer to the needs of their citizens, that is going to determine in the end whether authoritarian or uh, free 
countries are going to win out, if you like, in the race uh, to, to, to power and supremacy. We have to be better. That is the only way to win this conference. Thank you. Wonderful. Madam President, let me uh, ask again, though, are you in regular contact with representatives of the Chinese government on this? Um, I have, uh, as, as president, uh, as past president by now of the World Leadership Alliance and also as co-chair of the Islamic Ganjavi International Center uh, last year, uh, last year uh, as, as head of both uh, bodies, uh, we had a group meeting, an audience with President Xi Jinping, uh, but the two years before that, uh, he received uh, representatives uh, of the World Leadership Alliance from, uh, from uh, as broad a spectrum of continents as we could have, and we engaged in a, dial a dialogue with him, uh, and um, my colleagues had uh, serious debates about uh, the wisdom or the desirability of engaging with a, with a government which which explicitly is not a democratic one it's it's a one party rule and 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 we know exactly um how it's structured nevertheless just as i was one of the people who engaged with my native country with people in my native country latvia even as a child of exiles i lived in canada a democratic country and uh, but i took contact with uh, with poets with with writers with intellectuals in latvia as much as possible during soviet times um, my my personal conviction and my colleagues uh, at the club de madrid were 110 former um, heads of state or, uh, or government that engagement and some sort of dialogue at least on those topics on which agreement can be reached is a beginning and you know uh, the chinese themselves uh, have this uh, this uh, this concept of uh, a drop of water being stronger than stone because drop by drop you can uh, water can destroy stone if uh, if there's repeated uh, repeated repeated uh, iteration of something and I feel that we from democratic countries with democratic convictions we are like the drops of water that are trying to uh, in some way uh, reach out uh, to people in countries. Uh, where the stone is is the, uh, the rigid, the rigid authoritarian system under which they're living, but hopefully the the very populations of these of these countries eventually will join that that sort of approach of a drop by drop requiring greater freedoms for the individual as opposed to the collectivity as opposed to the state. And by the way, in the in the Western world. The, the fact that, say, uh, the, the London police can follow every step that anybody, any, anybody who walks into London at, at one point uh, can follow them everywhere. The fact that when you walk around with your mobile telephone, uh, for months on end, every step you take is, is being mapped out and traced and available uh, in, in, in big data. Uh, this sort of facial recognition uh, programs which are being now used uh, in in a way that many find objectionable in China, but believe you me, it's just a matter of time before they are going to be used by by uh, anti-terrorists and other forces in uh, in the Western world, and that means you and I uh, are going to be uh, submitted to them as well. So we have things to be concerned about in the in the rights of the individual as opposed to the collectivity, about the rights to privacy, safe from drones overhead, which will not only spy on you, they can drop. They can put explosives on you, and they can kill you long distance. And these are concerns, I think, worldwide. Mm -hmm. 